I read the story that when you were five, you tried to kiss your dad on the cheek to tell him you love him. Because that's seemingly as a young man, a young boy, that's what you wanted. You wanted to hear your father tell you he loved you. Yeah. So since he never told you, you were going to tell him. And you said he looked at you. Looked at me like I had an eye in the middle of my forehead. And I remember I, he was he was still drunk. Mm -hmm. And I remember kissing him on the cheek and I was just waiting for this like, I love you, son. I was like, I love you, dad. But he looked at me like. And I'll never I thought, I'll never do that again. I'll never do that again. And it kind of became where I knew that's where we were going to be. You know what I mean? That's where our relationship kind of. Even at five, you didn't. Even at the the, the yeah. right age of five, you didn't see your relationship progressing any further than what it was at that moment. Even as you reach your teenage years, your twenties, forever, how long he was on earth, and you continue to grow as a young man. Well, this is the thing, man. Being that vulnerable hurt. Yeah. Because I was vulnerable at that moment, and. I realize that even as an actor, my whole thing is showing vulnerability. You know what I mean? You don't mm -hmm. see a, part, a character until you're vulnerable. Right. And the fact that uh, this, all the stuff I've been going through is a, is a response to that. Go ahead. I'll tell people that I got molested. Mm -hmm. that's, that's showing vulnerability. Where the whole thing was, you know, you gotta be, you gotta be hard. You gotta, you can't never let them see right. you sweat. You know, you, you know, that's weak. That's weak. But I realized vulnerability is strength. Yeah. You know? Yes. Fact is, I'm mean. I, I listen, I, I hurt. You, you, man, you step on my toe, it hurt. You shoot me, it hurts. Right. You know what? Uh, there are times I cry. I'm like, shoot. I'll cry a couple of times while we're doing this interview. Right. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of things that hurt. And it's, First of all, entertainment itself is how we deal with pain. Sometimes you laugh, sometimes you cry, but that's how we deal with it. You know what I mean? You need to see a funny movie to deal with your pain. Mm. You need to see a drama to recognize your pain. You know what I mean? That's why you put on a slow jam. You know what I mean? Something right. that you, you gotta feel it. You lost her. You know what I mean? She was gone. She's gone. Mm -hmm. And you got to feel it. These, these things, this is what entertainment is about. And if you can't show vulnerability, you can't be, a, you can't be in this game. Not here. And I realized I, I was going to have a problem if I couldn't. So I said, I'm going to just be that dude and let the chips fall. I read the story and I always wanted to ask you this because it takes a special type of, per it takes a, for a, a son to actually fight his father because the dynamic, the thing I've always told my kids, I say, our dynamic will never change. I'm always going to be your dad. You're always going to be my child. Yeah. I said, and I never want you to put me in a situation where I view you as anything other than that. Yeah. And so we've always maintained a relationship in that aspect. I'm the father. I'm there. The child, there's a respect level on both sides as they have reached adulthood. Yes. For you to go to that level, because to fight your dad, you no longer view him as your dad. No. You view him as someone on the street that at this moment, I don't care. That was the darkest day. Darkest day. I mean, you got to understand the, the context of that situation is he had just hit my mother. And I'm going. In front of you. In front, well, no, he had hit. I wasn't there. But the whole, I got a call, phone call. Okay. And, oh, your daddy just hit your mama. Oh, now I'm a grown ass man. Post NFL. I already played the league. Like, mm -hmm. hey, man, what? What? You, you all that? You 245? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So you're right. right. You're right. You're, saying, you're talking to a five year old boy. Right. I'm like, bruh, what? And, and see, this thing too, I had already called. I said, hey, man, don't trip. Don't trip. My kids ain't never been around this. They ain't never had no, nothing like this. So just act right. And you know, holidays hard. Right, right, you, right, right. Just be on hard. your best behavior with the kids. Please. And, just please. And dude, he hit her, knocked her tooth sideways. Like it was crooked. Hit her dead in the mouth. She bleeding. I said, didn't I tell you? Now, bro, everything came out at that one time. It wasn't that I didn't see you as my father anymore. It was you that I'm five. And you're that dude that I was so scared of. 
and I got to get rid of this right now. Now you're going to get what you've been given. 25 years. But listen, man, I did it. And I felt at that moment, horrible. Wait, I beat his ass and I felt nothing. I was thought I was going to feel, oh, this is great. This is great. This is wonderful. Now finally it's all straight. Felt worse. Because now I just beat up the man that brought me into this world, right? Huh? Huh? See, this thing, all this stuff that people think of, the, the road raid, you jump out the car, shoot the guy, shoot him. How you feel now? Oops. Mm. I ain't never been in one of them moments where it's like, oops. Damn, I went too far. I didn't, I shouldn't have done that. How many times do we got to say that? Right. I've done it. I've done it too far. What did he say after, after that moment? What's it was done? What, what did he say to you? How did he, how did he look at you? Because it's not so much what he said to you. It's the look that he gave you. Bruh, I wouldn't even look at him. That's, that's how I didn't want to look at him. I was ashamed. I was ashamed. You know, you're going to A too man far. is never meant to attack his parents. No. It's, it's just not, it's just does not supposed right. to exist. But let me tell you, we did have a great moment. About 10 years later, because I, I left and never came back for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. We did have a moment because I said, and this is during my therapy sessions, and I called my father up and I said, you know, I, I need to talk to you because I need to find one thing that I'm thankful for you for. And I said, I'm thankful for you for having me. Because if you didn't have me, I wouldn't exist. I said, thank you for being my father. Because, and that was the, you just had to find one thing. It wasn't all the, uh, just, hey man, if it wasn't for you, I would never be here. Mm-hmm. Thank you. He cried. He apologized. He said he was sorry. And I never had that. Then I, I flew home and we hugged it out. I was like, maybe we're on a new path, maybe we're on a new path. And I left and he slowly started getting back again, you know, back hardening again. But I'll never forget. That's why I know there's a way. Right. There is a way. Yeah, of course. Mean, just why you talking about this today, us, us sitting down, if he's willing, I'm going to see. I'm going to see if he's willing to try this one more time because we all running out of time. Me and my father had a lot of issues, man. I mean, Again, he used to beat my mom. He used to do all this crazy stuff. And then he'd call me up before I get on AGT and cuss me out. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. This and, that. and I remember just going. Was, it, was, he, was he drinking? Yeah. Tea? Yeah. And that, so he got like this when he yeah. was drinking. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I mean. Is that why you don't drink? That's why I don't drink. That's why I don't drink. I watched my father get drunk and he beat up my mom. That was the earliest memory, man, watching him knock my mother out. So he, call, he calls you up. Before you go on AGTV, and he's saying, and he's saying, what is he saying he's to cussing me out? Okay, it's like you ain't shit. Where did this came? Where did this come from? I don't know. I don't know. It's one of them things where you think you big and stuff, you did it, and I'm going, wow. And it got to a time where I actually had to change my number, and I actually the only way I would communicate with him was through someone else. Mm-hmm. Just to, is he all right? Okay, cool, cool. But you, but that stuff deep, man. Mm-hmm. And it was easier to get rid of friends that way, where you go, hey, you know, yeah, I, I can move on. Or so called friends, you realize that oh, that's not a friend anymore. But it's a whole nother thing when it's, it's like, father. Your father. right. And my mom passed away a few years ago. So now it's just him. But it's one of those things where I realize what it is. It's okay. He's, he's jealous. He's angry. And, but that's okay. Have you and he always had this contentious relationship? Yeah. Yeah. Your earliest memories? Earliest. I remember we, listen, we were driving. He was driving me, pick me up from practice because he didn't want to pick me up from practice. He's like, oh man, I'm wasting my time. I got to go do this. Because he didn't like sports. And he said, you know, uh, I said, man, I'm going to make it in the NFL. He said, yeah, you know, only one in a million make it in the NFL. Only one in a million. I said, I'm one in a million. I looked up dead in the car. I probably was 12. 
So I'm one in a million. You gotta understand, I'll never forget this. Mm -hmm. These are moments make me who yeah. I am. And I said, man. And I remember those conversations. And I know that. Even, even as I walk around this town, I am one in a million. As you've gotten older, have you ever tried to sit down and have a conversation with your father? Have you ever guys have thought about going to therapy together and try to get to the root? You're 55. It's, I mean, I understand you have a very contentious relationship, but you only get one. Yeah. And I know sometimes you probably think you don't miss him because you have the opportunity to pick up the phone and call him. But you know, T, there might be one day that you don't have an opportunity to talk to him. I know. I know. And you know, that might be, I'll be honest with you, man. That might be the reason we sitting here today. Just talking about this is making me realize there's got to be, we got to find a way got to make to. this work. Yeah. We got to find a way. Right. I mean, and it's wild because I tried. I try. I call and then, you know, you find out he's drinking because yeah, he'll lie. You know, I ain't drinking. And, you know, and then he cut. But you know all the signs again. that he is drinking. All the signs. You know what I mean? The, everything. Because he's a whole different person when he's right. not. Right. You know, so. You have brothers and sisters? Yes. I have an older brother, a younger sister. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy that I was going in between. What's them. their relationship like with your father? Or is it just you? No, it's it's a it's, it's everybody. I mean, yeah, because he again. But like you say, he, everybody was drinking. Everybody was there when he was beating my mother. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it it makes it very very difficult. And when she passed, that was a really really hard time. Like because that's the thing, man. It's almost like why didn't you, well, like it should have been you. Like <laughs> you, know, right. you beating her, and, and she, she just internalized and all that. She got sick, and that was it. And it's like, man, you know. And, but it's one of those things, I think if he was willing, and I, we just got to find out if he would be willing, I have to find out if he'd be willing to do that so we could all sit down together. Yeah, have you ever, ever had a conversation with him like, Dad, why you treat mom like this? Why yeah. would you do, why did you do some of the things that you did? And you're talking to a, uh, now, you're talking to a person who would literally be like, I didn't, this is what, one thing he says, I didn't beat her that bad. That bad? Bruh, when you're talking to those kind of words, you're like, man, you know, what are you saying? I didn't beat her that bad. You're talking to her son. And he's never been able to acknowledge that. Um, is that and what's happened, this is, a, this is a problem, man. Listen, and this is one thing I realized, that if you don't deal with, with these things early or where are you, where you're at, they harden. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible talks about hardening your heart. And there's a point where you feel like, well, I'm good no matter what. And I never wanted to get like that. How supportive uh, was your family when you were growing up? Did they know you wanted to be in the entertainment? Because Flint is a very blue collar, hardworking. Normally yeah. you go to the factories and that's what you do. You graduate high school, you go to the factories or you go to the military yep. and that's it. So how supportive was your mom and dad, your family members with you? Like, man, I'm going to be an entertainer. I'm going to be in Hollywood. I'm going to do this. <sighs> Did they look at you like, man, you out your mind? Yes. First of all, you got to understand. I, I feel like uh, I got to go to the, the the biblical story of Joseph. Okay. You know, when he told his brothers, yeah, you look, hey, one day y'all all, all going to bow down to me. And they right. was like, oh, really? And they sold it. <laughs> right. Um, I used to tell people what my dreams were right. all the time. I was like, I want to be on TV. I want to do movies. I want to make movies. I want to draw. I want to do this, this. And they were looking at me like I was from another planet. they like, hey, man, you in Flint. Right. Where, what are you talking about? It, it, you are so far removed from all that stuff. And it kind of got me in trouble a lot. My right. mouth got me in trouble, uh, uh, you know, back then and now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I also realized it was one of the things where, you know, I had big, big dreams. And what was a big, big thing for me is my dad, you know, my father was an alcoholic, but also, he was one of those guys that came up from Georgia, a little small town, Edison, Georgia, mm -hmm. worked his way up, got a factory and, and created a life for us. But at the same time, he was a little jealous. Uh, I mean, he looked at y'all didn't work as hard as I did. Y'all didn't do the things that I did to get where I'm from. Right. Y'all really experienced oh. life. It was one of them things. Okay. And so he was always kind of, he never liked sports. My father hated sports. Okay. He would always want me to go to the army. My mother was super religious, which at the time, 
you know, going to church, I wasn't allowed to go to movies. I wasn't allowed to play sports. I wasn't allowed to dance. I wasn't allowed to listen to secular music. Everything I do today, I was not allowed to do when I was a young man. And so I didn't get to play sports till later, like right. ninth grade, 10th grade, when they kind of, when I, I cajoled them and, and they kind of got, my mom got out of the religious stuff a little bit, but it was, it was really, really strict, man. And, um, and when I would start talking about that stuff, they were like, we can't even go to the movies. But you're talking about being in entertainment. Right. It was hard, man. Right. It was real. I felt like a black sheep. I felt like a guy that was always kind of eyes in the clouds. I'm left handed. Everybody else was right handed. <laughs> I'm, I'm drawing. Everybody's like outside playing. They're like, well, hey, man, right. what is going on? Do you think because normally the way kids are with parents, the more kid, my parents don't want a kid to do something the more you drive that kid towards that. Yeah. And because they didn't want you to play sports and they didn't want you to, they, they couldn't see your vision of being an artist and being in Hollywood. Yeah. Did that drive the passion to make you want to get to it even more? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of wild because I even, I even have problems, you know, but there's family members and different things. A lot of guys counted me out even back then. Um, and now they're like, oh, okay, you did your thing and whatever. But it's, it's, it's one of the things where you never forget that. Right. You know what I mean? And you always felt, I always felt like I had something to prove. Mm -hmm. And that was the, that was a part of the reason I got into to football. Mm -hmm. But then also once I got in entertainment, I knew there was no way back. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.